Welcome to this new DIY in the Beavers video. In this video, I'll go over the Raspberry Pi AI camera and how to use it. The Raspberry Pi AI camera has a 12.3 megapixel sensor, a 78.3 degree field of view, a 1.79 focal ratio, and a manual adjustable focus, meaning no autofocus. Okay, but how exactly is this different from any other Raspberry Pi camera? Well, the Raspberry Pi AI camera comes with a Sony IMX500 vision sensor, which has a built-in neural network accelerator. So let's look at how this changes the camera's operation versus a traditional Pi camera. The traditional Pi camera passes the image to the Raspberry Pi, who then performs all the computations and IA inference with an optional IA accelerator that you could put on a side. The AI camera takes the picture, then uses the small ISP or image signal processor within the camera, which then generates an input tensor for the AI accelerator within the chip, which will then provide the output tensor, which are basically the results of the neural network processing within the AI camera that are sent to the Raspberry Pi allowing it to use the results without having run any neural network on the Pi itself. So that gives you your Raspberry Pi more bandwidth to take care of other stuff. Now what type of models can you run? You can run classification, so what is in the image, is it a person, is it an object? You can run object detection, it tells you what's in the image and where, so is it a person, is it a ball, a banana? You can run pose estimation, so it can identify the pose of a human and image segmentation, which can identify pixel by pixel a specific object in the image. There are several models available, and in a little bit, I'll show you how to get to them. So what if you want to run your very own specific model? You could build your own float model or simply retrain an existing model with your own data set. So for example, you could get your own set of pictures, annotate them for their classes, and then retrain them. So for example, using any model like a YOLO VA model or any other existing model, preferably one that works with the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Once you have your model, you have to optimize it and compile it on your computer. And you then have to run the IMX500 Packager on your Raspberry Pi before being able to run the models on your AI camera. If you choose to go that route, just know that the camera supports PyTorch and TensorFlow, single image neural networks, and at the moment it's only feed-forward model, so no RNNs or recurrent neural networks. Also, the input tensor is limited to 640 by 644 color images and 1024 by 1024 for grayscale. Finally, note that use and formula parameters can usually be deployed with the typical 4x compression, but larger models might require more aggressive compression, and anything in the range of 8 to 12 million parameters is just simply not practical for use in the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Alright, enough background. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the camera, set it up on the Pi, and start working with the Raspberry Pi. So we plug it up to our Raspberry Pi 5, plug the other cable and the camera, and we have it all hooked up. I'm going to put it on my case. Check out the related video if you're interested in this case. Set up all the screws and we're good to go. So let's jump right ahead into the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna start by opening the command terminal and do a sudo app update and sudo apt full upgrade. So then we're going to have to install the IMX500 firmware and that's going to install all the required firmware and several neural networks and the IMX post processing software. And right after that we're going to have to do a reboot. And then we're going to have to install Python 3 with OpenCV to make sure we have the latest as well as Python 3 Moncrease. Press Y. Now I made sure to create this Raspberry Pi AI cam folder. And I'm going to go to this repository from GitHub, which will give me all the required files to use with the IMX500. So you can see it creates a folder, Pi Camera 2, it goes examples, and then it has all the typical plus the IMX500 examples. And this has different Python codes that you're going to need to, to use the camera to the fullest capability of what it comes with default. Of course, you can then expand upon this. Also know that once you made all the installation under the user share IMX500 models, you have all the models that comes by default that you can leverage 100%. So I went ahead and created a folder called RPI AI Cam and within it another folder called Test1. Inside this folder I pasted all of the models that I showed you earlier that were previously installed and put them in a folder called Models. I also went ahead and pasted the demo Python scripts along with the assets folder that we downloaded. Now each of these files are used along with different type of models that I mentioned earlier. First, we have a Python file for image classification. We have two Python files for object detection. The one labeled MP at the end supports multiprocessing. And then we have one for post estimation and the one for segmentation. But how do we even run these? To run them, you have to go to the command terminal and get to the folder where I place the models. 
So once you're there, you'll have to run a command of the form Python, followed by the Python file name, then the model flag, and then finally the name of the file for the model, including any subdirectory if you have it within a subfolder. But how do I know which model to choose? There are too many of them. You have to go to the GitHub page for the IMX500 and see the list. So these are our GitHub Raspberry Pi IMX500 models, and there you will see all of the model files. If you scroll down, you will see that each model in a table that lists the model name, the model type, whether it's classification, object detection, segmentation, or process estimation, and it will also show the input size. Now this is the size of the image that will flow as a tensor that I mentioned was limited to 640 by 640 pixels for colored images. As you can see, none of them exceed this limit. Also, this will not cover the full size of the image captured within the camera. So there will be a bounding box labeled ROI, or region of interest, which will re represent the area that is being processed by the model. Finally, you'll see a column called script, which tells you roughly how to run the model. But this is what I just pre mentioned previously. Now, if you go to the assets folder I mentioned earlier, you will see a text file with the labels. You'll see Coco, Colors, and ImageNet underscore labels. If you open Coco, you will see all of the labels, which is basically what any model trained with a matching picture data set will detect. So as you can see, the Coco label file shows person, bicycle, car, motorcycle, airplane, bus, train, etc. These are the things that you would expect it to detect when you run the specific model that was trained with that data set. Now, if you're curious what Coco is based on, you can take a look at the Coco website, cocodataset.org, which will show you the tons of work that goes into that data set. Coco stands for Common Objects in Context, and as you can see, it's based on 330,000 images with over 200,000 of them being labeled. But this is a large amount of data, and that makes sense because you're able to detect many objects with several of them being in the same frame at the same time. Anyways. Now let's move on to run some of the examples so you can see them at work. So we enter Python followed by the Python code name, or file name, then the model flag, and then, as I said before, we have to enter the model name with the proper subdirectory. That's where we have model slash. So once we do that, we're going to be loading the code and model into our Raspberry Pi AI camera. And once it's fully uploaded, we'll be up and running. So we can see the truck. This is with yellow V8. So detecting it pretty consistently. So far, I like the result. Let's go ahead and add a few other things. So we got a banana. It seems to be doing the banana and the truck very well. Not seeing the fork now, or the truck. Oh, there's the fork, but not the truck. Uh, all right, there you go. Almost. Very consistent. Let's add a cup now. Let's turn it up a notch. Let's let me get it centered in. There you go. You got the cup, the banana, the truck, and the fork. So far looking good. Now let's add this dog plush toy, which thinks it's a teddy bear, even though it's a dog. Let's get it closer. Not still a teddy bear. It's actually a dog. Don't let it fool you. But it's eighty percent chance of being a, 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 the teddy bear, so I guess it was 20% chance of being the dog. Anyways, here we have the mouse and the truck. All right, so let's close this and let's try a different model for object detection. So in this case, we just have to change the text after the slash, after the folder, right? And in this case, I'll be running efficient dead light serial PP. So once it loads, we'll be up and running. Let me fast forward that a little bit so you don't have to wait too long. And there you go. We can see we got the truck. So, so far it seems about the same as the other test. But for some reason, I'm not getting the banana or the truck. Let me flip it. All right. So, we got the banana. It's not getting the truck. Hmm. Let's try something else. All right, let's try with the cup. We got the cup. Cup and the banana, a little bit of both. Not all the time, though. All right, let's try to compare apples to apples. So let's add the fork now and see how it does. Struggling to get the banana. Nothing from the fork. Let's try different angles. Some of the mouse, some of the cup. Let's try the banana in my hand. Okay. 
certain there's a banana and a person. Let's try the dog. Oof, this one got a dog for a little bit, but looks like it's final answer, teddy bear. All right, Jolivier won this one. Let's close that, and now let's try a segmentation Python code and model. So again, now here we have to put the full Python code name and the model. And once it loads, we'll be up and running. Let me fast forward that for you. And then we can see it's kind of detecting the banana. Not perfect, right? If we were removing the background, the part of the banana will be cut out. Then we got my fist with part of my arm. It's separating it well from the background. We got the green and the purple, right? Thumbs up. You can see part of my fingers are getting cut out, but it's very good. And then here, it's also doing a relatively good job. And then it's doing a horrendous job with the dog. I do have to say that the Raspberry Pi AI camera was able to process all the frames per second without skipping a beat. So really, some of the inaccuracies have to do with the specific models and what we're trying to achieve. With that said, this concludes the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.